You're watching Cox Connections, only on Cox 11. Recreational fishing is a summer tradition in Hampton Roads, but sometimes when fishing from a pier instead of a fish, you can hook a sea turtle. As part of an effort to help fishermen know what to do in this situation, the Virginia Aquarium Stranding Response Team has a new program that addresses the problem of sea turtles interacting with hook and line gear at fishing piers. Here to talk about the Fishing Pier Partner Program is Kathy O'Hara, Pier Partner Program Coordinator. Coordinator. Thanks for being with us today, Kathy. Thank you, Emma. Tell us about the project. Well, this project began last year as a pilot, and we're still in a pilot phase. But what we needed to do um, was respond to an increase in reports from fishermen that they were hooking, accidentally hooking sea turtles. So what we are trying to do is develop the appropriate educational materials and tools they need to safely rescue these sea turtles. And the program, um, it's for peer operators just in Virginia Beach? We have six piers that are part of the pilot program and they extend from Virginia Beach to Buckrow Beach and also the um, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. And um, it is involving the owners and operators who signed on to this program and the fishermen who frequent these piers. They are the ones that we're trying to get the message out to. So I understand that the program has three components. Tell me a little bit about those. Well, the very first component is to um, actually educate the fishermen on what they need to do. And then secondly, to provide the um, peers with, with the equipment they need, lift nets to lift these turtles out of the water safely, not just reel them in with a hook in their mouth or their flipper. Um, and then thirdly, working with the owners and operators to actually uh, design what, what is needed as we, as we go along, what we learn is, is necessary, um, signage, and, and so on. Um, so you mentioned that the incidence of hook turtles has, has increased, um, but do you think that that's a result of actually more turtles or just the fact that people know about the program and know to reach out to you? Um, we actually don't know, but in 2013 we had seven hook sea turtle reports. As of this morning, we've had 29 sea turtles hooked wow. this summer alone, wow. and we're still in the middle of July. So we're not sure what's happening, but we do know that we're doing a really, really good job of getting the information out to the fishermen. And the fishermen and pier owners and operators are doing an incredible job of calling when they, call, when they hook a turtle and getting us there as soon as possible. So it really is an education program for the fishermen and the pier owners to know what to do. So tell us what to do. Okay, and it is an education program for us too. I have to, again, say the fishermen are, are really telling us what they need. So we go out there and we're speaking with them and they're telling us what kind of signs they need, what kind of equipment they need, so it's going both ways. But what we would like fishermen to do, number one, if they hook a sea turtle, is to call us. They call our 24-hour hotline and as soon as they do that, we will send a team out to the pier immediately. Um, while we're on our way, we want the fishermen to secondly use a lift net. Like I said, these turtles have a hook in their mouth or in their flipper, and the last thing we want them to do is reel that turtle up 30 feet onto the pier. More damage. Yes, so lift nets um, have been provided to us by Bass Pro Shops. They donated them. So we have one at every single fishing pier, more than one. Um, the fishermen can use that lift net to lift the sea turtle up. Once they have the turtle on the pier, what we want them to do is put them into the sea turtle safety boxes that we provided to the piers. And those boxes are in a quiet and shaded area that reduces the stress to the animal. So then um, next step is that we'll be there and we'll collect those animals. We bring them back to the stranding center and um, not only do we rehabilitate them, but we've released those animals back into the wild. That's fabulous. Um, so you're seeing success this year, it sounds like. We're seeing so much success. I mean, at this point, you would have to say that we've seen a 300% increase in the number of turtles that we've been able to actually um, recover and release. Uh, and the, the releasing of these animals, it just brings it all together. Last release, we actually had one of the pier owners, um, operator, there at the release with the sea turtle that came from her fishing pier, and she put it down on the beach and watched it go back into so the ocean. she was invested in all making of us. sure that yes. that animal was okay and Absolutely. safely released. 
Yes, and Back a lot to of its home. exactly, and a lot of these fishermen also, um, once they learn that they're not only rescuing these animals, that, but they're contributing to the science, to the to the information that we're collecting on these animals. It's it's been tremendous because several of the sea turtles that we're releasing, we actually have um, put transmitters on them. So once they're back in the wild, we've been able to actually um, monitor their movements, and we're learning about a lot of these animals that are critically endangered in some cases. Is there a way that people who are watching the show can get involved? Um, with this program, number one is if they are fishing from the pier, you know, now they know what to do. And not only for their sake, but if call they the see somebody else, team. yes, to call the stranding response team. But also the stranding program is largely a volunteer effort. And when I say the team is dispatched, we have staff that go, but the first ones to get there are actually volunteers. They go to those piers. So if somebody would like to become a volunteer for the stranding program, that would be tremendous. And then finally, I have to say, this is probably the best unfunded program we have so far at the aquarium. We have really been um, relying on donations, and uh, we could definitely use donations. Each of these animals, if we have to rehab it, can cost anywhere from $800 to $4,700 wow. um, for medicine and food. So we, we just didn't budget for this success. So volunteers and donations can yes. go a long way. If people want to find out more, is there a website that they can visit? Yes, they can go to the Virginia Aquarium website and learn about how to volunteer as well how to donate. Terrific. Anything else that um, people should know that you want to share with, with our viewers? Well, I would have to say that, um, you know, it, again, it, the, the fishermen that are participating in this program, they deserve so much credit. And these pier owners and operators, this is the first time that they've actually come together on a conservation effort. And um, if you go to these fishing piers, thank them. Thank them, because they're doing a tremendous job. Well, I will certainly thank them, and thank you for your volunteerism you. supporting the program, and thank you for being here to talk with us about it today. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful amenity that we have here, surrounded by so much water, and uh, certainly need to make sure that we're helping to take care of our animal neighbors. Absolutely, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. When we return, Boys and Girls Clubs of the Virginia Peninsula is offering some new programs to help our youth become healthier and also to prepare them for the workforce. We'll learn about these exciting programs when we come back with more Cox Connections. <music> 